Hello everyone, this is General Hand Grenade. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. Today's video is going to be on another Global War 1936 to 1945 expansion set. It's Operation Sea Line, England Under Siege. Uh, so, um, first of all, what was Sea Line? Well, Sea Line was the proposed invasion of Great Britain by uh, Germany, and I'm talking about an amphibious assault, not just an aerial assault. And the reason it didn't go forward, or the biggest reason it didn't go forward anyway, was because um, the Battle of Britain, which was the aerial war over Britain, um, was lost by the Germans, like uh, the British had air superiority. Uh, the Germans still have planes left, but they just, uh, they, they weren't getting anywhere, right? Uh, it was obvious that they weren't going to defeat uh, the British in the aerial war, so uh, they, could, they conceded that and they, you know, Hitler saw a, saw a shiny object in the east and <laughs> away he went on Barbarossa, right? But um, it was proposed and they were going to do it. They had it all drawn up. They just didn't go through with it. But that doesn't mean that you can't go through with it. So what this expansion set is, uh, like it gives you a, a bunch of units that will help you uh, assault Great Britain. And it will also um, it will give the British units that will help you prevent sea line from being successful. And it was difficult to, to uh, take over Great Britain. And, and so... And it should be. It shouldn't be easy. And so they've given you units here, and I think uh, it probably leans towards um, uh, Britain being able to stop the assault more than it helps Germany being able to, to, to do the assault. So let's just get to it, okay? Let's take a look first at, at what you get here in the set. So here's the units that you get. Um, you get uh, radar towers, and this is all the, the, the British stuff over here. You get all these markers, and we'll get into it, what they are. Uh, the only thing you don't get is this right here. See, uh, the, like I put this guy on my chip here. Um, you, you get a marker for uh, a British commando, uh, and then you just put whatever your own unit on. You do get uh, the Falschmeger, uh sculpt, but uh, you use your own, um, your own sculpt. Uh, but you do get the chip for that uh, commando and then uh, like you have an amphibious uh, um, Landing craft and you have it's like a tank uh, a Watercraft thing and you also get a medium tank a couple coastal guns. Uh, this is a ja or ja <laughs> This is an Italian marker. So uh, let's just take a look here. Let's get let's get right into it here um, first of all, why do sea line? Okay, so uh, let's just take a look at the British card over here before we before we start that. There, uh, take a look here. So when you look at the surrender conditions for the British. Uh, it says if London is conquered, Great Britain may move its capital to Ottawa, South African Union, Calcutta, or Sydney. Great Britain surrenders when all these territories are taken. Until then, all units on the board continue to fight. The new capital location receives the nation's income and otherwise functions as if it were the old capital. 9.20 still applies. What 9.20 is, is that's the in the manual in, the, on, in chapter 9. And what that says is that uh, if you lose your capital, in this case if you lost London, then you would uh, uh, surrender any IPPs that you have on, on hand. Any saved IPPs, you would surrender that to the bank. Uh, if uh, the Germans were to take over Paris, then they actually get the French money. But that's the only case in the game where you actually take the the money from uh, a captured capital. In all other cases, any other nation that that loses its capital, they spend they give the money to the bank and not to the capturing nation. So that's important to note. And um, so, like it, it's not um, entirely worth it. Uh, when you can compare it to, say, doing a sea line in, in Axis and Allies. Because in Axis and Allies, uh, uh, you would, um, not only would you get their capital but uh, and their money, but they wouldn't get to build anything after that. In this case here, uh, the, the, the British would still get to, like, they just move their capital someplace else, and they, they keep building. They, they, the only thing they really lose is, 
uh, one term worth of purchasing things. I mean, there's other stuff. You, like you lose your your homeland, your homeland here, and uh, that's worth six. So I mean, that that's nothing to sneeze at. And Liverpool's worth three. And Scotland's worth one. So if the Germans were able to take over this uh, the whole island here, then that's worth ten. And then of course you've got factories on here and naval bases and air bases and and shipyards and everything. So you know it's not a good thing. I'm not suggesting it's okay to to lose it. I'm just saying that. Um, the prize isn't as big as uh, as it would be in in say Axis and Allies. So let, let's just see what uh, what it's all about here. Let's 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 dig into the rules here. Um, this isn't a set like um, like say Turkey where you would put a whole bunch of uh, units on the board or or change the setup significantly. Like you would talk about it and say, are we going to use these pieces? Yes or no? You know, and and if they are, if you are, then um, then uh, then there's a, a minor setup change, and we'll, we'll get to that in a while here, but we'll talk about the units first. So on page two, this is what it is. It's just uh, showing a picture of, uh, you know, the, the, the going after them. And then it just tells you what the expansion set is. So that's just page two. And then page three, it tells you what the contents are. And you see this one here, the Brandenburg Commandos. That's the one marker that I don't have. I I, I misplaced it. I uh, I'll, I'll find it somewhere. I've got so many friggin' markers and stuff that it, you know it's easy to misplace something like that. I got lots of German markers laying around. So anyway, uh, British Home Guard. So let's just move over here. So there's the British Home Guard marker. Um, so it says after the fall of France, Britain formed the Home Guard to defend against a possible German invasion. Between 1940 and 1944, one and a half million men and women answered the call. Home Guard members were often those ineligible due to age or physical condition for regular service. Home Guard units were equipped with small arms and sometimes improvised weapons and vehicles. Duties of the Home Guard including delaying enemy advances, reconnaissance and guarding important installations. So this is just the marker. You would place your, your unit on top of that, right? Like you would, you would place an infantry class unit on top of that. So let's just grab one here. So that would be your home guard right there, that guy on top of there. But uh, they just give you the markers. Uh, you, you've, all, you've already got your own, your own uh, infantry units. Uh, so to use that, it's like a special militia that the British player may build after the surrender of France. And it can only be built in the British home country. So only these three territories, you can build one of those. Um, and if, if you're using the partisan expansion, then forget about what I told you about how to use it. Uh, uh, each home guard uh, eliminated in combat gives the British player a free partisan generation role. So, it, for instance, let's say you had uh, let's say you had three of these in in Scotland, and um, and the Germans invaded Scotland, and so you lost all three of them. Well, you would get to roll three dice to try to generate partisans because you lost three units, right? So, uh, and I think uh, for this, I think you got to roll a 12 for the British to try to get a Partisans. Now, what, uh, what their stats are, they don't attack. So, like, they, they obviously can't move if they can't attack, right? They only defend it to, um, so that's not great. Usually, like, a regular infantry would defend it for, right? And these guys are only going to defend it to. But you got to remember, they were just, uh, they were like Partisans, right? They were just... Just regular people. They weren't. They weren't uh, trained army people. Um, but the good thing about them is the cost. The cost is only two. So you can put a whole bunch of them on here, right? And they would act as your cannon fodder, and then you would have other units in there to do the real heavy lifting. You know, to 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 roll the good dice. But these guys would be your cannon fodder. You would lose those first. And if you happen to lose the territory, then you would throw on an expansion or I'm uh, sorry, expansion. You throw on a partisan. Um, Actually, it doesn't say if you lose the territory, it just says uh, you get a partisan. But I don't think that's entirely correct, though. I think it would be if you lose your territory. Because if you were to capture a territory, uh, recapture a territory that had partisans in it, then you lose the partisans in that territory. So that must be what it means. Okay, so the next thing is this thing right here. This is uh, it's called uh, General Hort Headquarters Line Bunker. So um, it was a series of static defenses designed to delay a German invasion and provide time for German forces to regroup and counterattack. 
Uh, and it's, it's not just a little bunker like it, it looks like there. It was uh, it represented a number of field fortifications, anti-tank lines, and preparations to London and the surrounding industrial uh, areas for invasion. So it just it, it was all kinds of stuff, right? It wasn't one one bunker as it looks like there. Uh, so what you would do with that? Um, like I have my own bunkers that, uh, that I purchased from. Uh, combat miniatures and, and they're nice bunkers uh, but the, there's a difference between the regular bunkers in the game and this bunker the difference is like with these ones here uh, every, everybody in that territory would be plus two on the first round of combat right and so is this the line bunker is the same thing but the addition of the line but in addition to that the line bunker allows that all the units in there would be plus one for all subsequent rounds of combat so it would be better than this one it uh, you get that plus two in the first round but you also get plus one in any round after that so if it went five rounds and you know those units would keep getting to roll okay so and uh, the, um, it takes two turns to build one of these and it costs five plus five so five one turn and five the next turn okay the next thing here I'm going to show you this the picture of this so you can visualize it better it's this one right here. It's called a, a Monsal C4. So uh, this is what it looks like, the, the sculpt that you get. It's actually pretty neat. Um, and what it, what it was, was uh, it was uh, an anti-aircraft. Like there was a bunch of anti-aircraft guns on there. I don't know if you could see in the picture on video, but I can see it where there's anti-aircraft guns on there. So that's pretty neat. Um, and what, the, what the, this thing is for... I'll just tell you first, it only takes one turn to build it and only costs five IP, IPP. So normally in a, uh, this doesn't work in regular combat. This is only for um, strategic bombing. So how this game works with strategic bombing, and this is a quick overview, is that uh, uh, like your bombers would come in with your, with, uh, your escorts and they might send up some interceptors and then you'd fight an air war. And then when it comes to the bombing raid, the bombers uh, would go after factories or air bases or naval bases or uh, um, well any kind of facility right uh, but um, and they have their inherent anti-aircraft guns with them and so the the anti-aircraft gun uh, shoots at the same time that the bomber drops its load so even if the anti-aircraft gun uh, manages to hit a bomber that bomber still gets to roll its dice for the damage uh, because uh, they happen at the same time but with this Monsal C4 here this uh, the, they're getting the German bombers I was going to use that one that's, that's not a German bomber um, let's just grab a German bomber here so with the German bombers coming in um, it's it, it's like a, like you've seen it there the picture of it. It's out in the water now It's going to it's going to shoot only at the bombers not at uh, it's not going to shoot at the fighters or anything It's only going to shoot at the bombers and it's going to take anti-aircraft uh, a shot at, at, at each of the bombers coming in Before they reach the land so they're not even going to take part in the air war They're not going to get they're not going to drop their bombs. They're not going to get shot at with anti-aircraft guns they're going to get hit in the water before they reach the land. And so that's what this thing's good for. And that's pretty good, like a, a, def, a pretty good defense against strategic bombing raids. Um, and like I said, that costs five IPP. So the next thing is the home radar. And <laughs> I had this video, it was almost uploaded. And I thought, you know, I don't think I got that right. And so I gave Doug a call and we talked for a while and about lots of things. But... The reason I call was because of this. I had it all wrong. So I had to take the video down and, and redo it all. And that's why it is because of this home radar. I had it wrong. Anyway, so um, uh, it was the British Early Warning Coastal Radar System. And it was a string of towers. Uh, they used them, you know, like they strung them up all along the coast here. That's why uh, you don't just put uh, one of these in here and it's good for this whole, whole territory. Like it was against the coast here. But you have to pick which coast. Like uh, there's three coasts here. There's into C zone 25, like this here is C zone 25, or there's over here, there's C zone 24, which is right here, and then there's C zone 10, which is over here, right? Now you would probably pick C zone 25. Uh, that's where the, the invasion would come from. So you would have to decide 
where the radar is is uh, situated. It's not say you don't just put it in the middle of the territory and say this covers London. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. So um, you can use that once Britain develops radar. Uh, it functions just like the radar facilities that uh, you find in, in the instructions. Um, it, but it also allows for aircraft to scramble into a sea zone to engage aircraft that are moving through or on combat air patrol in the zone adjacent to the radar. So that is pretty devastating. Uh, like normally, um, when, you look at, uh, when you look at your instructions here, like you've got... Uh, the interception value, like there's a fighter at six, but the interception value is three, right? Um, but what it's saying is that if you've got German planes coming in to attack you, uh, and we're talking about just regular combat here. So you've got your, your German planes coming in uh, with an amphibious assault. What, the, what this uh, radar is going to do for you is that the British planes are going to scramble into the zone out here, and they're going to defend out here before these planes even reach in here. So rather than rolling at a three, you're rolling at a six because the, the planes are, gonna, uh, are going to defend at a six. And these guys, of course, they would use their own um, whatever, uh, whatever they uh, attack and defend at, right? So, uh, so that's, uh, that's going to make it really difficult to, uh, to assault uh, this if, if you've got radar. But you do have to develop that radar first, right? Okay, so, uh, and also the, the other thing was, was uh, let me see, I had one of those here. It's it also for combat air patrol. Now normally on combat air patrol, let's just move this out of here. Normally on combat air patrol, you would need a, a marker. Here, let me just grab a marker. Okay, so normally if you're on combat air patrol, you would need to have a marker out there and you would need to situate your plane out here. You would have to move him out on combat, uh, on your combat move. And then of course he's not going to be able to do anything else. He, he's stuck out there on combat air patrol, right? And so if somebody decided to go through with a submarine, the Germans decided to go through the submarine, then this guy's going to get a shot at this guy. And if he misses him, then he keeps moving, right? Um, so that's how the combat air patrol works. But with the, uh, with the chain radar that you have here, uh, that's going to cover the adjacent sea zone that, it, that it's going through. So you don't need combat air patrol. When, when uh, a German sub tries to go through there, you can scramble out there on, into combat air patrol and take your shot at that guy. You miss him, okay, he keeps going. Or you hit him, he's dead, right? Um, so that that, uh, that that really helps out with your combat air patrol. But again, you're going to need to develop the, uh, the radar technology. So, um, what's next? Let me take a look here. Uh, oh yeah, these things. Okay, now these are uh, British Auxiliary. Let's just put that down in there. So, the British Auxiliary were, Auxiliary were secret units designed to conduct guerrilla and resistance operations during an invasion. The Auxiliary initially consisted of 3,500 men who were trained for irregular operations. Units operated in self-contained cells with a radius of about 15 miles. Each cell had an underground operation base. Um, so, um, how do you use those? And there's two ways. The first way is uh, it can be built in any British home country land zone for a cost of 5 IPP after uh, France surrenders. Uh, no factory is required. So the auxiliary gives each eliminated home guard unit an additional defense role uh, at one. It is eliminated if the zone it is in is captured. So you don't actually put a unit on top of here. This just uh, signals that the zone has auxiliary in it. So let's take this uh, example over here. We've got uh, three British Home Guards in um, in Scotland. And so let's say the Germans come in and they attack this. Um, these guys would do their defense rolls at two, right? But say like uh, one guy got eliminated, this guy gets an extra roll of one because uh, he was eliminated. So um, he rolled at two and say he missed, okay, now he rolls at one. So it's still not that great uh, of odds, uh, rolling one on a 12 set of dice, but it does give you that extra roll, right? And you gotta remember these are pretty cheap, so you know if you had a, a whole bunch of these things, then that could be a lot of ones that you're rolling, right? So that's your auxiliary. Now that's one way to use it. 
But if you're playing with partisans, then you ignore that and uh, the rule that you play instead, uh, same thing, you, you put it down, doesn't need, uh, doesn't need a factory. Um, and so it says the, the marker has no abilities of its own, but it provides a plus one attack and defense to all partisans in the same zone and a plus one to all partisan actions. And that's, that's pretty big because um, part of, like, uh, I'm not going to explain all the partisans' actions and everything, but there's six different actions that you can take as a partisan, and uh, some of them are pretty, are pretty good actions that you can take, uh, you know, as far as taking money off or, or adding another partisan, or there's lots of different things that you can do. There's six different things that you can do, and you're using a six-sided dice, and so the odds will be increased by one. Um, so that will help a big time. And uh, it can be eliminated as if it was a normal partisan unit. Okay, so that's, the, that's these things. That's the auxiliary. The next thing is this one here. It's a British gas attack. And it, it only goes in London. You don't pick where it goes. It's just in London. Um, it cannot be captured or destroyed. It is removed from the game if London is captured. Uh, to use it, uh, during a, ho a hostile invasion of London land zone, the British player may elect to expend the poison gas marker. If he does, all defending infantry class units and, um, and regular infantry, uh, or sorry, regular artillery, not the uh, AA guns or the coastal artillery, uh, re-roll any misses. All hits must be applied to amphibiously assaulting units. So you can have uh, so all your all your infantry class units. So you know we've got militia, we've got uh, infantry, we've got artillery. It could be mountain infantry. It could be airborne infantry. Any kind of infantry. Uh, you get to uh, just once, uh, just once. If you decide to expend it, then uh, you get to re-roll the misses, and you would just roll it at your regular roll, like this guy normally rolls at a four. Uh, say he missed well he could say he gets to roll it four again um, so if you like if you had say 10 infantry and you happen to hit four times then you probably wouldn't want to re-roll those misses because four is not too bad right uh, but if you missed them all well you know I can do better than that so then you expend the marker and you re-roll all those guys and all the artillery and and, uh, and uh, see what kind of hits you get off it um, now if you're playing with the ordinance three then, then you wouldn't do it that way. Uh, you would, uh, you would uh, like I don't, I don't know the rules on this. Um, it's it's re referencing the ordnance rules, and uh, you use it. You count it as a first strike weapon, uh, resulting in a loss of victory conditions. Now I don't necessarily know what that means. I do have the ordnance three set, but I haven't I haven't de delved into that set yet. So. Uh, if you have the Ordnance 3 set, maybe that'll make sense to you, but it doesn't to me. I would probably just play it this way. Uh, we'll see, though. Maybe someday I'll, get, uh, I'll use that set. Anyway, time to move on to the German units. Actually, the Axis units, because there is, that, uh, there, is, there is an Italian thing in there, too. So let's just take a look at these things over here. Uh, you'll, there's a better picture of them there that you can see, because these are, are pretty small. Now, this is that first one there. It's, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. We're just going to call it the LWS. My, I, uh, I'm not good at pronouncing German words. Um, so it represents amphibious elements of the German army. Um, it's a marine unit for all, purpose, all purposes. It costs five. It may pair, pair with another infantry unit to make it a marine. So uh, let's just grab a marine here. And we're just going to grab a regular infantry. And uh, grab one of these. Let's move back to move back over here. Now, if you've been following along with my videos, or if you know the game, uh, if you've already played the game and, and you're aware of the rules, you'll know that only on an amphibious assault, only infantry class units take part in the first wave. Like if you had this tank here with, with uh, on the assault, this tank would stay out in, in the water there. And if these guys uh, had survived the first round of combat, then the tank would move in for the second round of combat. And, you know, third and fourth or whatever, how many ever rounds it took. 
um, before one side was, was defeated, right? But uh, um, with just uh, just being able to use the the infantry class units, if if uh, the British were to get one hit, then you could either take one marine as a casualty, or you would have to take two regular uh, class infantry, or any other class for that matter, like two mountain or one regular one mountain or whatever. Like it's it's two infantry units uh, for one hit, except if you have a marine, right? Uh, a marine uh, counts as two hits, and that's the good thing about marines. Marines are probably the best specialized infantry in the game. Like they have the best advantage in the game as far as a specialized infantry, from what I can see anyway. Um, but uh, if you do bring this thing, you get to you get to go in on that first round of assault uh, into the territory. Yeah, so you get to use your infantry class units, and you get to use this LWS. Uh, and it's uh, attack it to defend it for it moves one and it costs five but the other cool thing about it is that you can pair that with uh, 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 some other kind of infantry class unit not a marine unit but another infantry class unit to uh, upscale it to a, a being a marine unit so if you if say the British got one casualty rather than taking your marine unit off you could just take one of these off there you go Instead of taking two of them off like you normally would, you paired them with this guy, so you can take one of them off. Um, so that's the LWS. And then there's this other thing over here. There's a good picture of it right there. And that is, this is what it looks like, uh, the piece that you get. So uh, it's got these things on the bottom like that. Um, because um, it, it's, it's, it's the landing craft, right? But it actually goes onto the shore. You can't... Uh, you can't just sail up to and stay in the sea zone. You have to sail it right onto the shore, right? Um, no, they had guns on them. They had anti-aircraft guns, um, and they use them for different things. Uh, they don't attack or defend, but they move two spaces and they cost three. So that's the good thing about them is that they only cost three IPP to purchase. Um, the German Germans. Uh, let me see what their transports cost here. They cost eight. So. Uh, instead of co uh, costing eight and, and being able to move two units, this thing costs one and can, but it can only move one unit. So you could actually, you know, like you could stack these up, put, put a stack of chips under this one here. Let's uh, let's put uh, three, let's put two chips under that. So make that three of them. There you could transport three units, and that costed you nine. Whereas um, um, a, a regular transport would uh, cost you eight and you can only put two units on it. So that's the, the benefit of this. Now the difference though is that you move this onto land, not not in the water, but onto land. And so, um, let me just get to it here. If the land zone uh, that you're attacking is not conquered, then it's eliminated. So you go into the land here and, you, and, you, and you're attacking them. Uh, if you don't take the land, then these things die. All, all, all three of these things would die on you. Um, so then there's French barges. Uh, in preparation for Operation Sea Lion, Germany acquired man, many river barges from occupied countries. So once per game, Germany may amphibiously assault with two additional infantry or Marines from Bacardia to London. These units are eliminated if they do not score a hit on the first round of combat. No enemy ships may be in Sea Zone 25 during this attack. So let me just grab, um, let me grab another infantry and another Marine here. Okay, so these guys are gonna, these guys are just st standing on Bacardi and, um, uh, so um, on the first round of combat, now you can't have any any boats in Sea Zone 25. No British boats, no French boats, no American boats, no Allied boats whatsoever can be in Sea Zone 25 that you have to assault and then move in on the amphibious assault. It has to be a clean assault where there was no British boats in there to begin with. So um, these guys can move across without a transport, basically. But on the first round of combat, if either one of them don't get a hit, like let's say this guy gets a hit and this guy doesn't, so this guy's dead. But this guy can keep going because he, he got a hit on that first round of combat. So that's what the river barge or the, the barges are. Uh, and that's only once per game that you can do that, that you can use those two extra units. And they could be any infantry class units. 
Okay, so the other thing is the the false meager, and you get that you get the chip and you get the the sculpt here. Um, uh, let me just grab a, a British uh, airborne unit here because I when, when I was putting together my game here, I put them all on these false meager chips here. Uh, I didn't put them on the regular airborne chips. So if you had German units on the airborne chips, then they are they they would cost you. Um, three IPP and uh, I think let me just take a look here German Airborne um, yeah they only cost you three IPP and they attack and defend at two and they move one so uh, so that's what a what a regular Airborne would do but these Fallschmieger here they are attack three defend three and again move one but they cost five so for two IPP more you get uh, attack and defend at three instead of two uh, so th they're elite, basically, they're elite airborne units, and they give you one of them in this game. So, the next thing is this thing here. This is a, a chip that you use for the Italians. It's a Corpo Air Aereo Itali Italiano. So it was an ex expeditionary force that fought in the Battle of Britain and would have been available for a hypothetical Operation Sea Line. These aircraft were inferior to British and German models, except in their maneuverability, which made them harder to hit. So how you would use that marker is um, once per game, Italy may designate any one Italian fighter in France with the marker at the start of any game turn. The first time this unit is taken as a casualty, it is instead forced to retreat. At that point, remove the marker from the game and treat it like a regular fighter. So you have a... Uh, uh, an Italian fighter in somewhere in France, anywhere in France, and obviously you've occupied France at the time, right? So then, um, at the start of your turn, you could say, you know what, this guy's going to be the Corpo Ari Ario Italiano guy, and so you go into a fight, and then um, you're going to want to lose him as a casualty before you lose your other fighters and stuff, and still, so instead of him dying, he retreats instead, and then you lose the marker. So that's how that one works. Uh, so coastal artillery. Now they're going to give you the, a couple of these coastal artillery guns here, right? Uh, here they are right here. And this, these are the regular markers that they have. I, I prefer to use this one here. This, uh, this is the coastal artillery from Combat Miniatures. But, but you're going to get a couple of these with this set. So uh, Germany operated large coastal batteries overlooking the Dover Straits. That's the narrowest part of the English Channel there. Uh, German believed that with control of both sides of this area, it could close the strait to British ships and ferry troops across more readily. In reality, the large one, guns were not very accurate anti-ship weapons and may not have had the intended impact. So uh, how you would use that is um, if an alliance has a coastal artillery in London or Picardy, it gets one shot each turn at one at each vessel that transits into or out of Sea Zone 25 via season 11 or 13 uh, with no maximum number of shots so here's season 13 here and uh, what's the other one there uh, season 11 oh so 11 and 13 it's these two here so if you move into season 25 from here or you move out of season 25 into either of these two zones then um, then the other side gets a shot at you with their coastal gun. Let's say there's one there. Let's say there's one here. So if it was a, a, a British boat that moved out this way or into there, then the Germans would get a shot. And if it was the Germans, then the British would get a shot. Um, and But you only roll at one. Like normally these coastal guns would roll at three, but there's also no limit to either. So like if, um, if the British decided to move in here, with, or sorry, if the, the Germans decided to move in here with with uh, 15 boats and the Germans had an anti uh, uh, coastal artillery here, they would get 15 shots instead of three. Like normally you only get three shots, but you get one shot for each boat that goes in there. Not at three though, but only at one. Um, so that's, that's the only place on the board. Like uh, I don't see any other rules, uh, maybe in one of the sets I haven't looked at, but for sure, this one here, you get to put it either here or here if you were uh, anybody. Like it could be the French player. It says in, in either alliance in those two spaces. 
Okay, so uh, I think there's uh, there's only one more unit left, and uh, like I said, I, I I misplaced my chip. I'm gonna find it someday, but and then you just put uh, put some kind of unit on top of it. So I'm gonna use this guy for the Brandenburg Commando. Um, what they were, they were uh, airborne and marine infantry, so they kind of work like uh, the British commandos, right? Uh, they attack it two, they defend it two, they move one, and they only cost three. So the cost of a regular infantry, but they can work as a marine or they can work as um, an airborne infantry. So that's pretty cool. Um, also in this set, you get a tank here. They don't give you the stat on the tank. The, the stats are uh, just a medium armor for a tank. And like for the Germans here, let me just take a look. So they attack at six, defend at five, they move two and they cost six IPP, but uh, they give you a free one. And there's a reason for that. Let me just tell you what that is in a second here. So uh, setup changes. So if you decide before the game starts that you're going to try, uh, you're gonna put sea lion um, this, this set into effect, then you would place a coastal artillery on London. So there you go right there. And uh, you place the poison gas marker on London. So that's the only setup changes that you would make. Um, and then uh, in the rules here, I'll let me just show you, they, like, they give you all the stats there. So they give you a couple of tables. There's all the, the, the British units that we went over and it gives you a brief description, the attack, defense, the costs and movement. And then here's the German units. And then um, they also give you this here. So uh, it says we recognize a lot of things to purchase in this set. Uh, and given British and German co commitments elsewhere, a player likely would not be able to buy everything listed here. So uh, in order to fully play with Operation Sea Lion, we recommend the following. After the fall of France and the resolution of the Vichy rule, place the following units at no cost to either player. So the Germans, here, let me just show you what you would get. You would get two Falschmeger, um, one high speed transport, that's this thing here. Uh, and then you get the other one, the LWS, that's, that's that uh, amphibious tank, let's call it. <laughs> and uh, one Brandenburg Commando. And, um, and uh, the, the medium tank. And so you get all of these things in Normandy, okay? And for the British player, you would get uh, you get one home guard for London, so you would get this marker uh, and uh, a unit on top of it. Oh, sorry, you get one each for London, Liverpool, and Scotland. Uh, you get one of the Monsal Sea Forts, so you get that you get this cool thing here um, uh, for Sea Zone Twenty Five. Uh, you get the line bunker, of course, and you get the poison gas marker. And you get a chain home radar on uh, C Zone 25, and you don't have to you don't have to develop the technology. So they're going to get oh, and also the, you get this marker in London, the, the auxiliary marker. So just for this for this chain radar alone, that's going to go here in C Zone 25, uh, you won't have to develop radar technology. But if you're going to buy more, like if you're going to put one over here or here. Uh, or if you're going to put one somewhere else on the board, then you're going to have to develop radar technology. But just for that one uh, case alone in C Zone 25, the, they're not going to make you develop home radar, or sorry, chain radar. Um, and so that's what that, that's what the setup would be, is, is this here. Uh, plus, of course, uh, earlier the coastal artillery in London and they already put down the, uh, the poison gas marker in London as well. So that plus, plus your coastal gun, uh, I guess, coastal artillery, that's basically what, what you would get for each side. And so um, it seems to me that it would be more difficult to assault than, uh, than in order, uh, more easy to defend than it would be to assault with, with the units that you get. But we'll see, like it, it depends on who's winning the game and how much money you got and how well defended these guys are and stuff. I would imagine though that if you decided to play with this scheme before the game started that you would take extra precaution to put extra 
British units on here because you know that at some point the Germans are going to put these units on and so you're going to want to be prepared for that, right? Anyway, uh, that's that's basically it, I believe. Yeah, that's that's the last page there. So, uh, looks pretty interesting. Um, I don't know if that I, I would play with it every game. Uh, I think I'd like to see it happen, though. Like, I, I'd like to see a game where this stuff is used and where somebody does try to, to take London uh, just to see how well it works. Um, so, if you've had any experience with this set, please leave a comment in, in, uh, in the section below the video and let me know how it went. Anyway, take care everyone. General Hand Grenade out.